Factoring trinomials is like famous at this point. I mean, this is the one thing everybody remembers from algebra class. Sometimes it comes up in algebra two, and it's like either people despise it or they think it's like a cute, fun little riddle. I don't think they're that hard, to be honest. And basically what you're doing when you factor a trinomial is you're going to end up with two binomials. And really, it's the opposite of foiling. If you remember in earlier videos or in class, you learned how to foil. This is basically, if you foil this, you get this. So you're basically unfoiling when you factor. And there's a couple ways to do it. I'll show you how I do it, and then I'll show you like something you learn in school, which is pretty typical. They're similar, but um, this is how you do it. Whenever you do not have a coefficient here, you're super lucky. So like, you see this on a test, you should be like, wow, that's super cool. When you have a number here, like 4 or 16 or 5, <laughs> it gets like exponentially harder. But when you do not have an exponent, the reason this is easy is these two guys are always going to be x and x. The reason is these two guys have to multiply to be x squared. So that's easy. So you can just put it there before you even think. Write your parentheses, put your x's before you think. Now, for these two guys, you actually have to kind of focus. These two positions multiply to be negative 6 and add to be negative 1. Like, where did Ryan just come up with the negative 1? This negative x is technically a negative 1x. Of course, no one writes that, but that's what it is. So they multiply to be 6 <coughs> and add to be negative 1. And the way I recommend doing this is I start with the factors of 6. Like, and I kind of write them off to the side. I don't know. It could either be 6 and 1 or 3 and 2, and that's pretty much it. Sometimes the number is really big, and this is annoying because there's a million factors. But in this case, it's pretty straightforward. And then I sort of use like a little logic. Can 6 and 1 ever add or subtract to be 1? Is there any like combo where that could happen? Quickly you see not even close, right? But 3 and 2, they add to be 5, which is wrong, but they subtract to be 1. That looks totally promising. So it's got to be 3 and 2. And I recommend you just write them in there. No, you notice I don't have any signs yet. There's no plus or minus. And I'm going to actually do it wrong first to show you that it's kind of just trial and error. If I just blindly guessed and I was like, oh, I don't know, I know that 1's plus and 1's minus. How do I know that? Because they multiply to be negative has to be a plus and a minus to multiply to be negative. So, okay, I'm just going to be like, there. Oh, I'm done. So I check it now. Him times him is negative 6. I must be right. But actually, him plus him, 3 plus negative 2, does not come out to negative 1. So then you can, and I don't even care. It's fine. Get it wrong first. As long as you check it, and then you fix it. You go, no, that was totally wrong. Actually, I'm going to try the opposite, negative and a positive. And now let's check this. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, so that works. And then negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. It's a miracle. The other way that people do it, which I think is actually kind of cool, I don't do it this way, but is uh, teachers will recommend you do an x. And they say the number on top and the number on bottom. The number on top of the x is what multiplies to be him, and the number on the bottom adds to be him. And then you mess with numbers. You know, 6 and 1 doesn't work, 3 and 2, and that's where you could be like, Oh, I guess that would be a negative, right? Then blah, blah, blah. I, it's the same thing. I just do it in my head. You could do the X technique. I'll do one more, and I'm going to like pause for dramatic effect, and then you can like try to do it faster than me. But we need one more example. That was one where there's a plus and a minus. Let's do one where there's, I don't know. I'm not going to, totally not going to tell you. You tried to cheat just then and try to listen. Okay, this would be like, whatever, X squared plus 9X plus 14. No coefficient, Ryan said, don't think. I'm halfway done with my problem. Now here, multiplies to be 14, adds to be nine. It's either 14 and one or seven and two. Looks to me like seven and two, they're both plus. More importantly, let's check it. Seven times two is 14. Seven plus two is nine, it's a miracle. I lied, I'm gonna do one more, okay? This one's gonna be super exciting. Now you have, let's do this, negative six X plus nine. That's pretty trippy. Here I have a minus and a plus. Oh no, hon, I'm not sure what to do. Look at, same thing. No coefficient, so x and x, don't even think. Now pause, now this requires some deep thought. It multiplies to be a positive nine, but it adds to be a negative. Like, how is that even possible? Two positives multiply to be a positive, but two positives do not add to be a negative. Oh, what about two negatives? That's gonna work. They multiply to be a positive and they add to be negative. So in this case, I'm going to spoil it, negative 3, negative 3. Him times him is positive 9. Him plus him is negative 6. It's a miracle. So that's it. That's how you uh, factor polynomials. They're pretty fun if you get into them, like consider them a hobby. 
All right, and remember, if you're struggling in this class at your high school, you can take it online at Silicon Valley High School, and the credits will be transferred back to your school upon graduation.